Hello, it's me, Amelia. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be filming a video that probably everyone saw coming before every Sarah J. Mass book releases. I make a video with my thoughts, predictions, expectations, unpopular opinions, just everything I wish to see in the book. The book is releasing on February 16 and I'm so excited because I've been waiting almost three years. Has it been that long? That's insane. I've come prepared with lots of thoughts and opinions because, you know, I've been thinking thoughts. I've been realizing things, you know, this is the year of just realizing things and I'm just realizing things. The year of just realizing stuff and everyone around me, we're all just like realizing things. So recently I reread the Akatar series. Obviously I skipped the first half of Akatar, no one wants to read that. And while reading A Court of Frauds and Starlight, I just like, I had new thoughts, you know? I noticed things I didn't notice before, which gave me different thoughts and different expectations on A Court of Silver Flames. And also Sarah J Maas released like sneak peeks, so I'm also going to be talking about those. I hope this video isn't too long, but I just have so many thoughts that I have to share with the world. So I'm going to start off by talking about the covers, and I know that I made a video just where I talked about the Accord of Silver Flames covers, but now I'm going to talk about the alternative dust jackets that many artists have been making. So the ones that I bought were the Illumicrate dust jackets designed by Ellie Fian Art. I subscribed to her Patreon, so I have seen sort of what it looks like. It's kind of like a first-ish color draft. It's not a final version but I, it makes me really excited. The dust jackets are made for every book in the series, so I'm just gonna have a set that actually looks the same, which Bloomsbury, the publisher, did not provide for us. I also bought the dust jackets by Wicked Fairy Tale Co., which was designed by Nero.Sky. I really love Nero Sky's art, so I'm really looking forward to what it's gonna look like. And recently, this dust jacket also went up for sale but unfortunately, I'll not be purchasing that one because I can only afford so many dust jackets. But I'm also hopefully getting this one by Stars That Dream because I feel like it really looks similar to the existing covers. So I'll have something to match those covers. So yeah, I have three different dust jackets for Akko Sufu, which is perfect because I'm going to have three copies. No, I'm gonna have four copies. So yeah, I have enough dust jackets for those copies because I bought a lot of copies. The signed Barnes & Noble, the signed Books A Million, the Tour Edition, and the Standard Edition that comes with the Illumicrate dust jackets. So I'm gonna get into like the meat of the book. Okay, okay, I need to calm down. I wrote down like a lot of thoughts. Oh my god, I have so many thoughts that like I don't know where to start. I just wrote them all down. I'm just gonna like go in random order because there's no way I can make this thing organized at all. Firstly, I wrote Cassian is jealous of Rhysand's matiness. So when I was reading A Court of Frost and Starlight, in Cassian's point of view, we saw that he was pretty jealous that Rhysand found his person and his mate and he thought about how he really wanted to find someone. So obviously he's gonna find someone. Okay, cool. Cassian blames himself for all the losses that happened during the war. In his kind of internal monologue, we saw that he really struggled with this. He really blamed himself for the Illyrian people dying in the war, which obviously it was the right, the right, obviously it was the right choice to make because it saved the world, but he was still really sad about it. And I feel like in A Court of Silver Flames, like, we're gonna get to explore him going through, him having to deal with the Illyrian people not really liking him because he is the commander of Rhesus armies and the people are dead. So he's gonna be going through a lot in the book, but Nessa's gonna be there for him. Well, she'll probably make it worse until it gets better. So I'm really looking forward to that. Also, there was this guy named Kalon that was mentioned in A Court of Frost and Starlight, and I feel like he might play a role in Silver Flames. In Frost and Starlight, Lysanne and Cassian were talking about how there was this guy named Kalon who is from their rival camp, their rival Illyrian camp. He's the son of 
a warlord or something like that. And he's the one that's been spreading dissent in the Illyrian mountains. So he's like gathering people to go against Cassian. In Frost and Starlight, Cassian and Resand were talking about how like they might get rid of him. But then they were like, no, we can't do that because we're like honest, good people. So I think that Calon would definitely play a role in Super Flames. If he's not in there, like that's so embarrassing for me. You know, maybe Nesta will even get with Calon, which will make Cassian really mad because they're like enemies. But I'm excited to see how Calon will play into this next book. Okay, I'm gonna start talking about the sneak peeks. The first sneak peek, you know what, I don't even know at this point, but one of them was with Azriel and Nesta, I guess. And he says, I hope you're not giving my brother a hard time. I love that he calls Cassian his brother. We love to see it. And then Nesta says, is that a threat, Shadow Singer? I just love, I love their relationship, yes. I love that we have Nesta and Azriel interacting. That's so beautiful. Cassian took a long drink from his own tea, drained it to the dregs. Azriel said coolly, I don't need to resort to threats. Period. Nesta gave him a smile, holding his stare, and neither do I. I love that. I just love their dynamic. I'm so excited to see more of it in Silver Flames. Just like Nesta, Azriel, and Cassian. Don't really want Feyre and Resand in this book that much. I'm sorry. I just feel like their story is over. Plus, Nesta doesn't want to see them, so I don't want to either because I'm a Nesta stan. And I think Frost and Starlight really made me just tired of face sand. You know, I do, I really stand them in Akatar, Akamath, and Akawar. I, I do, I love them, but I just feel like it's over, like, goodbye. Now I'm gonna talk about the other sneak peek that I think was not supposed to be released because the company, I believe, that did the audiobook released it, and I don't think they got Bloomsbury's permission because they took it down but we still got some content. It's basically Cassian, Eris, and Nesta. They're at some kind of ball, I guess. It seems like it. And Nesta and Eris are dancing. Um, and Cassian, I guess he's jealous and everyone is watching Nesta. I'm gonna talk about the matedness, the matiness, the mate, the mating bond. So a lot of people think that Nesta and Eris are mates. A lot of people think that Cassian and Nessa are mates. So let me just give my opinion. Firstly, I don't think that Cassian and Nessa are mates. I know that uh, I think almost everyone thinks that they're mates, but I strongly believe that Nessa and Cassian are not mates. And I think it would be a better writing choice if they weren't mates. So firstly, we know that finding your mate is really rare. You know, the Fae have been searching for their mates for hundreds of years like Tamlin, Resand, everyone, and they haven't found their mates. And I just think that it would be really unrealistic if all the Archeron sisters found their mates the first year that they were Fae. Um, it's extremely unrealistic and it doesn't follow the world building that Sarah built. Also, I remember Sarah J. Mass mentioning in one of the books that the mating bond is just which couple would create the strongest offspring or something like that. It's not necessarily always romantic love. For example, through Resan's parents, who would have just created the strongest offspring, which is Resan, but there wasn't really a lot of love there. It was just the mating. So I feel like Nessa and Cassian don't have to be mates for them to be in love and love each other. I think like people thinking they have to be mates, like I just feel like it doesn't have to. And I feel like Sarah J. Mass might explore a relationship that's not a mating bond relationship anymore because we already had that with Feyre and Resan. So I'm really hoping they're just in love without kind of having the universe decide for them to be in love. Also, I feel like since they're both Fey, they would have sensed the mating bond already or other people around them would have smelled the mating bond. So if there is a mating bond, I don't know why it hasn't been realized. Yeah, I don't think they're mates, but I don't think they have to be mates to be the one for each other. I also think it would be really unrealistic for all the three Archeron sisters to find their mate within kind of the same group of people that know each other. 
it's just not realistic. I don't think they're maids. I don't want them to be maids. I want them to just love each other. Yeah, you get my point. Okay, now do I think that Nesta and Eris are maids? Because I know that a lot of people are like, oh my god, are Eris and Nesta maids? Is Sarah J Mask gonna like pull an Akatar and make Nesta end up with Eris? And a lot of people are like, is the threesome with Nesta, Cassian, and Eris? Listen, you know what? I can be completely wrong. These are just my thoughts. But firstly, the threesome isn't between these three. I know that for sure. Okay, if you don't know about it, okay, there's not gonna be a threesome in the book. But Sarah J. Mass wrote one that she ended up deleting because her editor didn't want it in the book. There was no way it would have been between those three because Cassian really hates Eris for what he did to Moore. So there's no way Cassian would even participate in that at all. Um, I don't know who it's with though, and we'll probably never find out, but who knows. And I think it's possible for Nessa and Eris to be mates because at the drawer in the Archeron house, Feyre painted fire for Nessa, flowers for Elaine, stars for herself. The flowers for Elaine is basically the spring court with Lucian, and then fire. Eris has fire power. He has like flames, I think. So I feel like it could be a possibility, but I don't think it would matter because I think she's going to end up with Cassian anyway, despite a lot of people thinking that Sarah J. Maz is going to pull an Akatar and switch the couple. That's not going to happen because the book follows Cassian and Nessa's perspective. That would be stupid and the synopsis obviously hints at them getting together so i don't know why people think that if i like if i get anything wrong that's gonna be so embarrassing because i'm so like i believe in my i believe in my views you know i'm so like set on my beliefs i don't think nessa and eris are mates but i think that it could definitely be a possibility but honestly i don't think we're gonna find nessa's mate in this book but i don't think it matters anyways but I feel like Nessa and Eris are going to make Cassian very jealous, maybe. Maybe they will spend time together or something. I think Cassian is going to be jealous a lot in this book. You know, maybe Nessa will get with some Illyrian guys. And Cassian will just have to deal with it, because Nessa is Nesta. So I'm gonna talk about the synopsis for a little bit. I feel like it says a lot about how this book is gonna pan out. So basically in the synopsis, Nessa is just going through a lot. Cassian ignites her temper. She is forced into close quarters with Cassian and the fire between them burns even brighter, burns even hotter. And then it mentions the treacherous human queens who return to the continent and they forge a dangerous new alliance that threatens the peace. The key to halting the queens relies on Cassian and Nesta facing their haunting paths. So Cassian and Nesta battle monsters from within and without as they search for acceptance and healing in each other's arms. So obviously from this, firstly, we already know that Nesta is not gonna end up with Eris, so I don't know why people keep saying that. Second, the human queens forge a new dangerous alliance. And I'm really interested to see who this alliance is with because obviously Hybern's already dead so I'm thinking it might be one of those territories that were mentioned in A Court of Wings and Ruin. Resan mentioned some territories that we've never heard of before and they seem to be kind of on Hybern's side so it might be those territories but honestly I have no idea who it could be unless it's the that lord that keeps Vassian um, trapped, it could be him, but I don't know, I don't- I have no idea who that could be, but I'm interested to find out. And Nessa and Cassian have to rely on facing their past in order to, I guess, stop the human queens. Don't know what that means either. I guess they'll have to deal with their personal stuff, I don't know how that's gonna relate to stopping the queens. I guess maybe because the queens had something to do with Nesta becoming Fae, so there is some bad blood there, but there's probably more to that, but I can't figure it out. You know, I wrote so much about what I'm gonna talk about, like I'm not even halfway there, it's gonna be so long. Next up, I'm gonna talk about the blood rite. You know, everyone talks about the blood rite, they're like, Nesta's gonna have to go through the blood rite. If you don't know what the blood rite is, in the Illyrian Mountains, 
there's a thing called the blood rite which takes place at the Ramiel mountains um the Illyrian soldiers they go into this mountain and they have to touch the tip of some rock at the top or something like that and they kind of raise each other there and on the way there they kill each other or they die from natural causes because it's like a very harsh environment and we also know that it's also a way for the soldiers to relieve tension so if they hate someone then they'll just kill them in the blood right and a lot of people think that Nesta will be in the blood right that's a very interesting theory that I can get on because I do want to see her in the blood right but I just feel like why would that happen like I don't see a way for it to get there firstly I don't think Cassian would let Nesta go into the blood right alone. Firstly, it's for Illyrian soldiers. Nessa's not even an Illyrian soldier. There's no reason for her to do it. Second, there's no tension she has to relieve with other people who are in the blood right. Why would she be a part of the competition? Like, she didn't even, like, grow up there. But I feel like I want it to happen because it would be interesting. You know, it's basically the purge, and I love the purge. I do want to see her there. I want to see what Sarah J. Mass would spin to kind of make that happen. Also, Cassian already did his blood right, I think hundreds of years ago, so there's no reason for him to go back there because it's like over for him. So I don't know why Nesta would become a part of it. I don't know. I don't know. But, but I do want to see it happen. I think it would be really interesting seeing her like fight off Illyrians. But also she has like no skills. Also in this book I feel like we're gonna see Cassian training Nesta because I know that in A Court of Wings and Ruin Nesta didn't want to train because she felt like she didn't need to learn or she didn't need to know how to fight but after the war she realized that like she has to learn how to fight. I feel like there was a sneak peek about this. Yes! Okay, so there is a sneak peek that says never again would she be weak, never again would she be at someone's mercy. So I think that this hints at Cassian training Nesta because she didn't want to be weak anymore. Also, when the sneak peek is your shuckle, you two need a chaperone up here. I think that's also the two of them training. Who knows, I could be getting everything wrong, but that, that's what I feel like it is. I also think that there's some things related to the older books that we're going to find out about. For example, firstly, the gift that Cassian bought for Nesta that she didn't want and he threw it into the Sidra River in Velaris. So Sarah J. Maas said we're going to find out what it is. So I'm really excited for that. A lot of people had a theory that it was a siphon, which is those power things that Cassian and Azriel have to kind of guide their power. So it could be that, but... I mean, obviously Nessa has powers, but like, I don't think it's a siphon because like, that would be kind of useless because right now he doesn't know like what powers Nessa has. I don't know, it could be a siphon, but yeah, I don't know. I'm excited to find out though. I'm really excited to find out. I, I kind of hope that they'll get it back. Like he'll go into the river and retrieve it because it really breaks my heart to know that she won't be getting it when it took him months to find that gift. Very sad about that. I also think that Nessa and Cassian are going to have a conversation about the war. You know, when Cassian was about to die because the King of Highburn was about to kill him and then Nessa kind of covered Cassian's body with her own because she would just die with him. And then they kissed. But then they never talked about it ever again. So obviously they're going to have a conversation about that, which I'm really looking forward to. Also in Frost and Starlight, Cassian met a girl named Emery. A lot of people think that she'll play a big role in Silver Flames. Personally, I don't think she's gonna play a big role in Silver Flames. She might play a small role, but I think that her and Nessa will meet because I remember Cassian talking about how if they met, like that would be crazy. So I think either they would be rivals because they both are like, they both have the same energy or they would be best friends because they both have the same energy. But I really don't think she's going to play that big of a role in the book, like a lot of people are theorizing as. Regarding Nesta, I feel like we're really going to get to find out why she is the way that she is. Firstly, her mother's death, it affected Nesta more than it affected her other sisters because Nesta was the oldest. I guess maybe 
she knew more about what was going on so we might get some insight into that and i'm hoping we're gonna get to figure out why nesta is so nice to elaine and like protective of her but with Feyre, she's a bit more careless. Obviously, Nessa still cares about Feyre, which is the reason she went looking for Feyre after Tamlin kidnapped her. I think we're going to get more insight into this. Very excited. I really have trust in Sarah J. Mass's writing. Also, maybe we will get to find out more about Nessa's sort of almost sexual assault that was mentioned in the Target edition of A Court of Mist and Fury. And when that scene was mentioned, Cassian got very, like, protective of her. So I'm hoping we'll get to explore some of that. And moreover, oh, I'm so excited for this part. Yes, yes, yes. So Nessa's gonna get her period. I remember in Frost and Starlight, Feyre said that Faye get their period every six months. But she said because it's every six months, it hurts so much. Like it's unbearable, you wanna die. Well, it's already like that, but like it's worse for them. And I remember Feyre saying, that Nessa's period was coming soon and she said I wasn't sure she could endure that pain alone. She won't be alone, you know? So I'm thinking, if you've read Empire of Storms by Sarah J Maas, there was like a certain period element that played into a, a certain couple's romance and I feel like Sarah J Maas did that really well and so that couple ended up being my favorite just because like he was so like nice about it and like kind and protective stan elite and Lockin. so i'm excited to see how sarah will pull another like period i'm sorry this sounds like really weird but i think it would be really interesting like nesta just going through it and cassian helping her but she also really hates cassian but she kind of maybe needs his help I'm so excited for that. I'm so excited. Um, Cassian said that in the mountains where they do the blood rite or like at the Windhaven camp or something like that, in the Ramiel mountain, there are ancient creatures hiding in the mountains. So I feel like we might get to meet some of those ancient creatures because in A Court of Mist and Fury, we met, you know, the bone carver, the weaver, those ancient creatures. So I think maybe we'll be introduced to the ancient creatures in the Ramia Mountains, which were mentioned. Cassian said that like they're very like hidden and like powerful, whatever. So maybe we'll get to meet them. I'm gonna talk a bit about the setting of the book. In the beginning, I felt like the setting of the entire book would just be in the Illyrian Mountains, like just Cassian and Nessa in the Illyrian Mountains. But now that I think about it, I feel like we're gonna be in so many courts. You know, because from that barroom sort of sneak peek, I feel like that might be in the autumn court. I just have a feeling they'll be traveling at some point, maybe visiting different courts, visiting the human territory, maybe even going back to Valaris, maybe even going to the spring court. So I feel like the setting definitely won't just be in the mountains. And we also know that some high lords are gonna be in this book. I'm really hoping it's Tarquin. I low-key really like Tarquin and Callias. I'm really hoping Tamlin will be in the book for some reason. He wasn't in much of Frost and Starlight. So as weird as this sounds, like I kind of miss seeing him. Wait, this is so weird. No, I hate Tamlin. But like, I just want to explore. I feel like Tamlin's story is left at this part where his guards and people have left him Lucian basically left him, or he kicked Lucian out. Tamlin has no one, his manor is empty, he's not really eating, so I really want to see more of his story and how he kind of moves past this stage of his life. So yeah, I'm hoping we get the spring court, but I also feel like that would be more prevalent in the next book after Silver Flames, Elaine's book. I mean, obviously we don't know if it's going to be Elaine's book. But I, I have a feeling it is because the Books a Million edition of Silver Flames has a chapter with Azrael's perspective or a bonus scene. So I feel like that hints at Azrael being the next book. And I feel like the next book might be Elaine, Lucian, and Azrael's story. So yeah, I feel like we'll get probably get to see Tamlin more in that book where Lucian is at. And just to talk a little bit about 
Elaine's situation. Frost and Starlight really hinted at Elaine and Azero getting together. Like I have said before, I used to be sort of anti Elaine Azero because I had a strong feeling that they were just platonic and were gonna be best friends. But as I reread Frost and Starlight, I feel like, wow, like they're gonna be something because of these hints. Like when Elaine is holding some food and Azero says, sit down, I'll take care of it, which was really cute. And there was also this scene where Azero walked past Elaine and she stiffened. And then there was also the scene where everyone was sitting at the table and they were about to eat, but Elaine wasn't there yet. And Azero didn't let them eat yet. And Azero told everyone to wait for Elaine. So yeah, I feel like they might be the next book. I'm hoping that they are. I want to see them get together and I want to see Sarah J Maas explore kind of rejecting a mating bond. Even though I feel really bad for Lucian, but I hope Lucian finds his person. He did find his person, but then she died. Just Minda or something. Also, we know that Lucian has his band of exiles, which includes him and Jurian and Vasa. I'm hoping we'll get to explore that in the book after Silver Flames. Oh my god, why am I already talking about like the next next book? But I don't think that Lucian is gonna play much of a role in this book just because of what Sarah J Maas has hinted. I remember Instagram lives. I feel like Sarah didn't talk about Lucian that much. Oh, Sarah said he'll make a few appearances. So I feel like we won't get to explore the Band of Exiles that much unless Sarah was just trolling us and he'll be in there a lot. But um, speaking of them anyway, I don't know, Lucian's person might be Vasa, but I'm really hoping it's not because from what we got of Vasa in, in Wings and Ruin, yeah, in Wings of Ruin, I didn't really like her. I didn't like her energy, I don't know, who knows. Um, so I don't really want her to be with Lucian. Something that really scares me is when, <sighs> is when Cassian almost died in A Court of Wings and Ruin and Cassian says something like, it'll take more than that to kill me. And then Elaine says, no, it will not in chapter 30. And I'm like, is Cassian gonna die? But also Sarah said that Nessa and Cassian will get their happy ending. So there's no way he could die. But I don't know why Elaine would say that in the first place, which kind of scares me. I'm also really hoping we're gonna get to explore more of why the glamour didn't work on Nesta. In Agatar, Tamlin glamoured everyone to think Feyre visited some aunt, if I remember correctly, and it worked on everyone except for Nesta. So I want to know what it was about her that it didn't work for her. Anyways, I'm hoping that Nesta hangs out with Elaine and Azure a lot in this book so we can get more of them and I'm hoping they don't hang out with Feyre and Rhysand because I'm just tired of them at this point you know I love them but at this point I don't want any more scenes of them together because Frost and Starlight has ruined them for me like why would they do that in the sky if you know what I'm talking about like I'm just like why and like I just can't I just can't Plus, Rhysand was so mean to Nesta in Frost and Starlight near the end. Even Feyre was like, are you, like, shut up? So, I don't know, I don't, I mean, obviously Rhysand's not perfect. Everyone makes him out to be this perfect guy, but he's not perfect, so he does have his flaws, I understand that. Also hoping to see some of Amran and Nesta, because they did have this sort of friendship. But that, that was ruined by the end of Echo Fast. And Amrin made some comment about her. She made some slut shaming comment. I don't know. I didn't like Amrin in the end of that book either. I feel like I've said all my thoughts in this book. Literally nothing else will come out of me because I've I've like given all of it out. Well, I guess I could mention a few more things. Um, the Windhaven camp, I guess we're gonna see more females being trained to become soldiers instead of doing like the house, the housework, you know, dishes, laundry. I also feel like Cassian and Nesta will have some rivals with benefits going on, if you know what I mean, like they hate each other, but you know, so I'm excited for that. Mm, I'm so excited for that. I'm just so excited for their interactions in general. Every single Cassian and Nesta interaction I have savored and read 10 times and to just get a whole book on them is so exciting that's really all i have to say about this book nothing else will come out of me i've given my all to this video 
so thank you so much if you made it throughout this whole thing that's insane let me know if you agree or disagree with anything i already know a lot of people are gonna disagree with me when i said that nessa and cassian are not mates and that's fine because they might be mates and i'm just making a fool out of myself thank you for watching literally let me know what you think and i will see you guys in my next video thank you so much Mwah. very excited for this book i hope you are too very very exciting so excited. I'm so excited. Okay, bye.